Smoking is bad for you. Choose life. Choose a job. Choose a career. Choose a family. Choose a f***ing big television. Choose washing machines, cars, compact disc players and electrical tin openers. Choose good health, lower cholesterol. Choose your future. Choose life. Uh, did I say right? I can inform you, you have passed your train spotting examination. Well done. Ah, uh, don't forget, choose what in a way at the end of it all. Piss in a way in a miserable home. Never mind. Hello everybody, Jack and Ori time again. Anyway people, I wanted to talk about this Ford Mondeo. It's a 2010 Ford Mondeo 2 litre diesel Titanium X, I have to say. It's a very nice car. I have drove this car and it feels solid. It's a, it's a nice car to drive. It's got all the electronic dash, you know, <laughs> all the bells and whistles, but anyway, uh, the boss bought this car to, to sell it on obviously because it's a used car lot here unfortunately there was a little problem with it uh, I'm going to run you through that problem and I'm going to run you through what I've done to fix it the unfortunate bit of it all is I didn't make a video on this because after he bought this car it sat here I looked at it I'd, I'd done a little bit to it then other work come in more important stuff so I had to leave it and it's been, the, it's been the course of about two months now I've actually fixed it so I've only been sort of like working on it when I've had the time so anyway I'm going to run you through what the problem is and what I've done to get to the end of it because I'm sure this is not an isolated problem and I'm pretty damn sure there's plenty of people out there you lot out there with Mark IV Mondeos with the same engine as this that probably have similar issues so I I shall begin. When this car is stone cold, right, like you've left it overnight, you go to start it, and by the way, I'm, I'm talking about a few months back when we first got this, it was frosty mornings, so it was pretty damn cold. Now these cars have glow plugs in them, so you put, this is a push button thing by the way, which is annoying, but anyway, you've got to push the button on the dash for the ignition lights to come on, and then you've got to wait, or well, you're supposed to wait for sort of like, I don't know, 10 seconds or so, and then you push and hold the button with your foot on the clutch to start the car, and it should just start up because it's got glow plugs in it. But what was happening was, you would try to start the car, it would crank over, and it would, it would try to start, it would, it would fire, but not quite fire up properly. Then after cranking it enough times, it would eventually fire up, and you would get, I, I'm, I, you know, at the beginning of this video, the smoke, smoke I showed you was nothing compared to what it was smoking like. It was bloody clouds of smoke pouring out of it, and the smoke would continue for like five minutes. But if you got in the car after that and drove it down the road, as soon as that engine warmed up, it was fine. It, it didn't skip a beat, it drove absolutely perfect, bloody lovely and you drive it back here and there was no smoke at all, completely gone. But leave it again overnight and it'd be the same process, really hard to start and clouds of smoke. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you how I went about trying to fix it. <laughs> so, come this way. Before I go under the bonnet, I will tell you, I did plug our scanner, Solus Ultra, into the diagnostic port 
and I read the ECU. There was only one code in it and it was an EGR fault. I can't tell you what it was now because I've long forgotten, but <laughs> it had the one EGR fault. So I thought to myself, ah, because I remember Transit Mark 6, they were quite common for the actual EGR valve to sort of stick and then they would, they, would, they would become very hard to start and if you did get them started, they would plume loads of smoke out the exhaust. And there was quite often we had to clean them, them Mark 6 Transit EGR valves to get the, the valve free again. But anyway, what I'd done was, your EGR on these engines is right down the back of the engine in such a lovely position as you can see. There's two 10 mil bolts on this pipe which goes round to your air intake. So I decided to unbolt this and I put a little blanking plate in there to blank the EGR valve off, just to eliminate it. And surprise, surprise, it made no difference whatsoever. So that obviously was not the cause of the problem. So probably a few weeks later, when I managed to get back on this again, oh, by the way, I, I did replace the fuel filter. That, that was the first thing I had actually done put a new fuel filter in it. The fuel filter that was in it was quite clean anyway. So, but it's worth checking. Like on diesels, the fuel filter is one of the things you want to check first of all anyway. Uh, I decided to look at the glow plugs and there's a plug connector here with four wires on it. Now there's two checks I can do on these. One is a continuity test with a multimeter. So I pulled the plug connector apart and the plug that goes to your four glow plugs I'd done a continuity test on each injector. Three of the injectors were open circuit. Sorry, not, it's not injectors. Three of the glow plugs were open circuit and one of the glow plugs had continuity. So I'm thinking, aha, here we go. This is it. It's the bloody glow plugs are the problem. So the, the, by the way, the other check I'd done just to make sure with the connector all connected up, I used my power, I, no sorry, I power probe to start with so I knew I had a live here when you put ignition on but I also used my multimeter to check the voltage at these four wires and when I put the ignition on I had a good 12 volt at each wire and, and I waited for the, for the actual power to be cut by the relay or whatever operates it so as you know when you switch these diesels on the, there's usually a glow plug relay which will operate these wires to heat the glow plugs up for a good like eight ten seconds then it will switch off and it was doing that perfectly so i know i had power there so i put it down to the glow plugs so if any of you have ever replaced glow plugs in one of these engines i i did do a video on replacing these glow plugs which i'll link above you'll <laughs> you'll probably know that it's not the nicest of jobs i will say though you I mean you have to remove the EGR and everything but it wasn't too bad they, they all came out they all come apart and it, it was the job was okay so I replaced the glow plugs and I have to admit it, it started better whereas before it was cranking over a lot to actually get it to fire up in the first place now it was firing up quite nicely but I was still getting huge amounts of blue smoke and grey smoke and god knows what coming out of the exhaust and I thought flipping it this is getting ridiculous because I mean it's a used car and it's like how much money are we going to spend on time and money is that's the problem that's the that's the name of the game is you buy a car you don't want to spend a fortune on it but there again it's, it swings and roundabouts so some cars you just have these problems you've got to deal with them but anyway a little bit later on I kind of sort of like thinking about it and I thought what else could be the problem because this car was driving like unbelievably well as soon as it has warmed up it was absolutely fantastic so i thought to myself the only other thing i can think that could be a problem is leaking fuel injectors and as you can see here the, the sun guys is really bright so but I've, I've just fitted four brand spanking new diesel injectors they were from euro car parts and they were 175 pound plus vat each and these were new ones by the way brand new ones so they weren't cheap cheap nasty re remanufactured jobs these are the real deal uh, but I will say when I pulled these injectors out no I'll tell you exactly what I'd done to start with I drove this car got it nice and hot I then parked the car up and I left it for four or five hours 
I then decided, then I, I then took the injectors out. I wanted to leave the car to go somewhat cold because I wanted to see if the injectors were wet when I removed them from the engine because I believe that they were dripping diesel fuel. The pressure from the in the fuel rail was was leaking through the tips of the injectors. They, I, I reckon the injectors had become weak and they were dripping into the cylinders over the course of so much time and that's why when I was trying to start it it was it's, it's like too much diesel in the cylinder to, to bloody burn properly so it's it's not burning it right and it's causing all the smoke but anyway I pulled all these injectors out and three of them were wet they, they were wet literally wet on the tip of the injectors and I thought that's got to be it <laughs> that has to be it one of, only one of them was dry so I subsequently got these four injectors I put them in and I will point out here if anybody ever comes across this because you might think to yourself do you code these injectors on the later Mondeos like the 4.5 Mondeos they've got a slightly different engine they've got like a big cover over here that you have to take off uh, you do code them but on these particular injectors you'll notice there is a number there is like a 20 digit code up here but there's also another number, if I can zoom in, you see that number five? That is the injector classification number. So what, what basically happens is, these new injectors have the number five on them. If your old injectors that you've just taken out have number five on them, then you do not code these new injectors. If your new injectors had a different number on them compared to what come out, then you do code them. But I was lucky because the injectors I took out all had the number five on them. And it specifically says do not code injectors if the classification number is the same. So that was good. Uh, that that saved, the saved a bloody while. But anyway, we put these injectors in, started it up, gave it a run. And lo and behold, it's fixed. And I'm, so, I'm just wanting to bring this whole video up because I'm sure there's people out there who are getting the same symptoms of clouds and clouds of smoke in the morning when the engines are code. And if you don't know where to go, then this could be a good start. I would definitely go for the glow plugs first anyway, because you need them working on these engines. But as a, I'm beginning to think there's a high chance now it is actually the injectors. Well, it was the injectors on this engine. So uh, it's been an expensive job to fix. But there again, if it's a car that, that's in good condition like this one, then it's worth it. I mean, you spend sort of like, you could spend a thousand pounds on a car like this. If you're going to keep it for two, three years, then it's well worth it. So anyway, I'm happy. It drives absolutely perfect, I have to say. And now, to be honest, if I start this car up on a cold morning, it's like you'll, you'll still get a puff of blue smoke or grey smoke, wherever it is come out the exhaust on initial startup but the smoke will clear within a space of a couple of seconds and then you know after that it's perfect there's no smoke at all not it's, it's the thing to understand is these these Mondeos these engines they're not as refined as like the Mark 5 Mondeos or the BMWs and cars like that where the tailpipes are squeaky clean these tailpipes will always be black with soot these, this car does have a DPF on it, but it hasn't got like the advanced system that you've got on the more modern cars. Because over the last few years, the number of years, they've made leaps and bounds on emissions. So, but this has got like a, a crude version of a DPF on it. <laughs> so you're always gonna get a bit of smoke out of these, but I have to say after what I've done to it, it's absolutely perfect now. Right then, just before I go into the garage and show you what else the bloody hell is going on, I'm just going to point something else out here, which was rather annoying at the time. You know I said I bought four brand spanking new diesel injectors for this car? Well the video I made last week where I was removing the injectors, I, I was showing you how to remove the, the copper washers that sit down the injector holes. Well, they were easy enough to remove, 
But when I received the four brand new injectors, they never come with no copper washers. I mean, Jesus Christ, you, you would think, you'd think if you'd buy four injectors, they would come with the, at least with the seals to, to seal them into the bloody injector holes, wouldn't you? But no, <laughs> I had to go to Ford and buy them separately. And then the four seals that I bought, them four copper washers I got from Ford, when you put them over the injector nozzle, they don't stay on it, they just fall off again. So I had to use a tiny bit of grease on the injector copper washer to put it onto the injector to then push it into the hole. So, oh my God. Anyway, that's it, the job's done. The car is absolutely spot on now. You get a little bit of smoke on start up, but it's cleared within a few seconds. So nothing like it was before. And for a car that's done 111,000 miles, it's actually running a bloody treat now. So I'm happy with that. Now I'm gonna trudge on and get on to the next job. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, let's go and see what's going on here. What else is on the agenda today? Well, I can tell you for now, Mark Free Mondeo, this is the car I've just put an engine in on my post I put last week where I was taking an engine out of a car. In actual fact, let me show you this scrap car. <laughs> This Mark III Mondeo, which does happen to be quite a nice one, it's a gear as well, 06 plate, it's one of the rentals that we have here. If they don't get smashed up, they get overheated, and it's mainly the Americans that drive them. And what this guy had done, I'm going to have to adjust the exposure here because it's, it's so bright and then it's so dark sort of thing, but he had literally taken it into a ditch and he had bent the bottom arms. See, so look at that wheel. <laughs> he, he's literally well not bent the bottom arm he's bent it but he's actually smashed it he's actually broke it clean off I'll show you I've got the bonnet up down there you can actually see the bottom arms completely snapped off uh, where he's hit it that bloody hard but at the time of the accident which was I think it was last summer this car has sat here that bloody long now but the engine was running perfectly fine the radiator hadn't lost no water the automatic gearbox was good as far as we know. So now I've got another car with a bloody been overheated badly and it's done the it's either cracked the head or done the head gasket in, but it's a lot of work to take the head off one of these HE engines. So I decided to actually just put the whole engine and gearbox out of this car, which I knew was okay, into the other rental. And I've done that and it's running perfectly fine now. But it's got a small problem I'm going to show you. But yeah. <laughs> So uh, what I'm going to do with the rest of this car is just take off anything that's good and then get rid of the body shell. I'm sure the scrap man will love it. Bit of a waste of a car really because it was quite nice. So anyway, I'm going to go back in the garage and show you what is actually wrong with this car. Yeah, I put the engine in this car. I've done this Monday and it actually went okay. <laughs> Not really any hiccups. I took the engine out the top. I've actually, I've done a video on replacing one of these engines which I'll link in the top there they're a little bit tight when you take them out the top especially the automatic gearbox but no it went okay it weren't a bad job to do actually and that that engine there this is the one the the yank had overheated it had lost its water I'll show you actually I'll show you here that water connect uh, connector here goes to your top radiator so the hose that goes on there, let me find it. I think I kept it. Yeah, here it is. This is uh, all because of a little rubber hose. We've now got a destroyed engine. If I can find. Just there. 
just where the ju just where the like the jubilee clip goes round it there it's split Ooh. <laughs> yeah so it's it split there and it started pissing out water and uh, of course it's, it's completely run out of water. The guys carried on driving it until the engine started chugging and God knows what, pinking and God, all kinds of noises it must have been made, making. And when we asked him, hey, uh, didn't you notice the temperature gauge? He goes, well, well, of my hand, I wasn't looking at the temperature gauge. I was looking where I was going. I was keeping my eyes on the road. <laughs> What's the bloody point of having a temperature gauge then? I mean, you can imagine if a car runs out of water, it's going to get bloody hot and it's going to start running really ragged. So you'd think, well, I don't know. You would have think you would have noticed something was wrong and you would pull over first. But, we're, but these people, they just carry on driving. But there again, it's not their car, is it? So if they blow the engine up, it doesn't really matter. So I shan't be trying to rebuild this. It's just not worth it. If it was a cam belt that was on there, it might be an easier job to take the head off. But because it's a chain and it's a big job getting the chain off and uh, it's, it's a huge job getting the head off one of these anyway. I just ain't got the time for it. It's quicker to put the bloody engine in. But anyway, I put this engine in, uh, which we presume is all, all OK, but it's got this problem. So I'm going to fire it up. There is a distinct whining coming from the engine. Now I've looked over this engine now and it seems to be coming from this side, the power steering side. I thought it was like the alternator that was whining to start with, but it's not. And what I've actually done, this screwdriver, this is what you do, you put the screwdriver to your ear and you put it on parts of the engine. And I can tell you now, down there where the air conditioning pump is if I put that to my ear I can really hear it whining so I'm pretty sure that the air conditioning pump's buggered what I'm going to do, I'm going to replace the air conditioning pump so I'm going to take the alternate belt off anyway and I'm going to fill with my hand the bearings and all the pulleys I'll put a brand new water pump on this engine so I know it's not the water pump but that winding don't sound too clever so I better look into it so yeah I just wanted to point that out if people don't know you can put a screwdriver to your ear like that and then put it on on the part of the engine not the rotating part obviously but on the body of the like like the alternator or the power steering pump or the aircon pump and you can hear the vibrations coming through that unit say the aircon pump you'll hear it vibrate through the screwdriver to your ear and the louder the noise the more probability it is that bloody unit and i'm pretty sure it's the it's the bloody air conditioning pump that's noisy so i'm going to rip this off there's no gas in this system because i ain't gassed it up yet so I've just taken the alternator belt off. Not the nicest of belts to do, I will point out. Uh, right, there is our air conditioning pump. Now, not the clutch bit on the end, that doesn't matter, but this here, this, listen to this. I hope you can hear it. <laughs> That's as noisy as hell. Yeah, so that's it. I'm gonna rip this pump off, which isn't too much actually. It's one 10 mil holding the, the two pipes onto it. And then I've got about three 13 mils, one connector, and then the whole thing just come off. You yeah, little ripper. Right, it's out. I'll show you how this comes off in a minute. It was a bit tight up there, if you know what I mean. It'd be easier if the bloody radiator fan was out of the way. Anyway. Let's have a listen. You hear that? That's as rough as arseholes. Yep. You hear that? Andy can hear that over there. 
and he's at least 10 feet away. Right, anyway, that is scrap. This can go in the shit pile. Good riddance to old scrap is all I could say. Yeah! See ya. So what I'm gonna do, I do know that this engine, although the head gasket or head is cracked, I know that it wasn't making any funny noises from the auxiliary pulley sections. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this auxiliary belt off and I'm gonna take the aircon pump off this engine and put it back onto the car it originally come off. To get that belt off, it's like a 15 mil bolt on the tensioner there. You just do it clockwise and that will loosen the belt like that. And once that belt is loosened, I'm gonna to have to hold this with my foot because my I've got one hand holding the phone. So, now come on, that's it, we're off. That's our serpentine belt off. But yeah, these, these aircon pumps. Oh, this one's nice and smooth. All you've got is one plug connector there, which I'll come out there like that. Uh, yeah, it, it wasn't just as well I actually checked this one first, but I, I actually know this engine wasn't making any noises. That's lovely. Yeah, all you've got is where the two pipes go onto the aircon pump, just here. There's one 10 mil bolt in the middle, and then you've got two 13 mil bolts at the top, and then you've got two 13 mil bolts at the bottom of the pump. So down here, one's there, and one of them's already out because it holds a bracket on for these for the pipes. So uh, four 13 mils, and we're off. And then we'll bung this on the car and hopefully start it up, and there'll be no more noises. Okay, this is it. It's all back together. I'm going to turn the key. Lovely, I cannot hear no whines now. Can you hear any whining, Andy? I can't hear any. Any whining you're going to get now is from me. I'm getting all the shit jobs. I'll tell you what though, zero miles range. <laughs> I better get some petrol in it. No, that's great. I'm so glad that's fixed. Alrighty then, that's it. So uh, I just wanted to bring up that Mondeo because I thought it was a little bit interesting. Uh, and, and the Mark III Mondeo, that was quite funny as well. But anyway, if I find anything else that's worth talking about, I'm sure to make a video on it. So till the next time guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.